will turn now to two related issues, the environment and transportation. This question is from Aubrey Fox in the Jefferson neighborhood. What are your plans for our waste management system, specifically regarding our field recycling program? Uh, if you didn't hear the question, it is what are your plans for our waste management system, sp particularly uh, regarding the failed recycling program? And Mr. Bibb, we'll go first to you. You know, it, it's a shame that it took nearly two years for uh, this mayor and council leadership to be transparent on the fact that we weren't recycling in this community. Uh, and the fact that we've, you know, gone to a curbside recycling program, that's okay. But I believe as the next mayor, we got to hit the reset button invest in more community education to give our residents the education they need on how to recycle. We also have to do a better job as a city of investing in what, in what, what works. Um, you look at the great program that Daniel Brown started like with Rust Belt Riders that is investing in composting. It's that type of investment in community-based programs we need to address this recycling issue long-term in our city. Thank you very much, Mr. Bibb, with time to spare. And for those who may not be familiar with the ins and outs, Cleveland has uh, restarted its recycling program, but it is opt-in and it's less frequent than it used to be. Council President Kevin Kelly, where do we go from here? Thank you. The, we all need to be committed to doing better with how we treat our solid waste. And the recycling program that collapsed because of the, the international market, and we failed at educating the people in terms of when it was ending and what we were going to do to bring the to bring the program back we are starting with a more limited recycling program and it's going to start with those goods where there is a market for for fibers for aluminum for some plastics but the days of just throwing everything in a blue bucket are over but we can get back to a more to, to a more robust recycling but we program but we need to make sure that we're creating the economy in the city of cleveland we should not be shipping our recycled goods out of the city of Cleveland, we can create that local economy, create a circular economy where we do our own recycling, where we put our solid waste back into productive use, but it's gonna be, it's gonna take a tremendous amount of community education, and it's really gonna take everybody to understand the complexities and the challenges of, the, of recycling with this market. Thank you very much, Council mm -hmm. President. Councilman Jones, we go to you, then I saw some hands up. Councilman Thank Jones. Thank you so much. You know, we found out about the issue through a press release. So number one, communication is extremely important. We have to be able to communicate with our residents. You know, dumping is a major issue in our city. I mean, a major issue. So the plan is for us to make sure that we have a great recycling, a recyclable uh, a program, but also as mayor, I'm gonna bring city services to you. I'm not gonna wait for you to come, right? City Hall has to come to you. And that's why as mayor, I'm gonna walk the streets and we're gonna fix the sidewalks. We're going to take care of the trees, and we're going to make sure that you understand that you can trust us. We have to rebuild the trust back in this city. And I understand. I get it. If we don't listen to you, then that is why you leave the city, and that is why you don't believe that we can take care of business. And as mayor, we are going to come right to your doorstep. So whether it's recyclable or recycling or whether it's dealing with the dumping issue, we want to hear from you, and we want to make sure we implement the solutions that you come up with, Thank that you. we come up with together. Thank you very much, Councilman Jones. Con uh, Congressman Kucinich, 30 seconds. You cannot blame the people of Cleveland for the failures of waste management. You have to blame City Hall. And you don't want to recycle failed leadership. Congressman, thank you very much. Uh, we will go next to uh, uh, Councilman Zach Reed. Let us be clear. We have in our system a checks and balance. The fact that Cleveland City Council did not know that recycling had stopped in the city of Cleveland is alarming and it's a shame. Let's be clear. As the Congressman said, you cannot blame this on the citizens of the city of Cleveland. You got to lay the blame where it actually is. It's at City Hall. And I've said, when I'm mayor, we are going to fix city services in this city. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman Reed. Uh, Senator Williams, thank you for your patience. And Mr. DeBello, I saw you too. Thank you very much for uh, the question. Listen, um, as mayor, you have to be transparent and you have to be honest with the people you have been elected to represent. And that's what you will get from me. If I were not going to be dumping your 
uh, recyclables there, you would have known about it. That's the first thing we have to do, make sure we're honest with people. Secondly, I think we need to teach people where their recycling goes. There are so many rules about what you can recycle, what you can't recycle, who can go Thank where. You very much, Senator. We need to make sure people are educated in our city about how to recycle. Thank you very much, Mr. DeBello. 30 seconds for you. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, uh, really, we should just be blaming the Fox 8i team, right? Or else we wouldn't be having this discussion. There'd still be the two trucks. And what other city is having this discussion? Uh, of course, we need to do recycling. Just pay the $7 million. Justin's right. We need to start composting. And further beyond that, we have a place that's been wrecked in an environmental justice sense. We need more trash cans. We need to convert more parks. Um, this goes well beyond recycling. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We'll move on to another environmental issue. One of Cleveland's biggest environmental assets is Lake Erie. And uh, Zach Kaiser of Tremont has this question about our Great Lake. Lake Erie and the rest of the Great Lakes are the largest bodies of fresh water in the country. As access to fresh water becomes increasingly scarce and further commodified, what specific environmental policy would you champion to preserve Lake Erie for generations to come? Councilman Reed, how would you preserve Lake Erie? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for the question. Uh, the first thing that I would do is I would say that I would do like Carl B. Stokes did. I would go to the I would go to our river and basically say this is a great asset, and we need to preserve it. The one thing that I would do that uh, I had 11 years working for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, so my job for 11 years was to preserve the natural resources throughout the state of Ohio. So I've got a long history of doing something about natural resources here and preserving natural resources. The other thing I would do for our lake, is I, I would work with our senators and our people in Washington, D.C. to ensure that individuals know that dumping fertilizer and the whole lights and coming down to our natural resources, it's not, it's not, it's not negotiable. We are not going to accept it. So we need to work with our leaders in Washington. We need to work with our leaders in Columbus to ensure that we've got this fresh body of water it's a great natural resources, and we are going to preserve it by any means necessary. Thank you very much, Councilman Reed. Congressman Kucinich, you've got the full time for this. How would you preserve Lake Erie? As a member of Congress, I, was, I, I helped to uh, move a joint commission, U.S.-Canadian commission, to stop the taking of bulk water resources out of Lake Erie. Lake Erie is absolutely our future. It is our health. It is the path for Cleveland to reestablish itself nat uh, nationally. Specifically, I want to see uh, tree planting along waterways to stabilize banks. I want to help uh, create floating wetlands to help purify the water uh, that's near, near the uh, shore. Uh, beyond that, we need to stop the use of pesticides and herbicides by City Hall and help our residents learn how they can use non-toxic means of lawn care. And, uh, uh, for example, this, this lake is so precious to us. And as the next mayor of the city of Cleveland, I am fully prepared to lead the way to protecting it as a natural resource, you, as Congressman. our source of water, recreation, everything that it does. Thank you very much. Senator Williams, I had you on my list for the, for the full time for this question. And then my apologies to those with their hands up. We will have to move on. We're getting close to the end. Uh, Senator Williams. Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, the first thing I would do is make sure that our water purification system is working properly. It's a good system now, but we always need to make sure we're doing our checks and balances. We don't want to act or be like the uh, city in Michigan. That's the first thing. Secondly, I will continue to work with the Ohio EPA as well as the coalitions that are currently in place in the state of Ohio with our surrounding cities, making sure we're all on the same page when it comes to protecting our bodies of water. As you all know, years ago, the in the area of um, Toledo, Ohio, they had the algae blooms that caused all types of problems. We have to be uh, proactive when we come to protecting our waterways, and I will do that working with surrounding communities and surrounding states and the federal and state level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. We are going to move on to the next question, but I'll make sure you guys have opportunities to jump in soon. Uh, we can't talk about protecting the environment by cutting greenhouse gases without talking about transportation. Lauren Welch of the Edgewater neighborhood asks this. 
How would you improve the city's transportation infrastructure to make public transportation available to everyone? And how would you fund it? Uh, Mr. Bibb, uh, this question will go to you first. How will you make transportation available and how will you fund it? Well, I have a lot of uh, experience dealing with this issue, having served on the board of RTA for nearly three years. And affordable public transit is about access to getting to a doctor's appointment. It's about access to, to getting to a good paying job. It's about access to getting to school. And we as a city must take a more proactive role to invest in quality public transit all across our city. Number one, the next, the next mayor must work with the CEO of RTA and other key leaders in our community to explore additional, additional revenue sources to better invest in public transit. Secondly, as mayor, I wanna create a department of mobility and transportation inside city government so we can better invest in transit-oriented development, but also better invest in multimodal mobility solutions so that our residents can get the access to good transit they deserve and need. And as mayor, I'm gonna make sure I appoint members of the board to RTA that reflect the real lived experience that our riders see day in and day out. Thank you very much, Mr. Bibb. Uh, Ross DeBello, same for you, you've got the full time. Thank you, Lauren. Um, we want to restore popularity and ridership to pre-2006 levels, right? We've lost money, we've lost riders. This is a downward spiral. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is fight, fight, fight for funding. We know we're getting $511 million. Uh, RTA is getting 200, you know, uh, 300. The county's getting 200. But that is not perpetuating and sustainable, right? So countywide, we may have to look at some new forms of taxation. We may have to tax parking, right? Because what we want to do is make it more popular and make it more affordable. We want to get to free fares. And if not free, an income-based fare payment. We also want to make it more friendly and clean. We don't want fare evasion being enforced. We want all door boarding. We want more routes. You need a route within 10 minute walk of wherever you live. So this is going to take work. Thank you very much, Mr. DeBello. Council President Kelly, I'll go to you uh, for the full minute. Then I saw some hands. Thank you. Transportation is critical to getting to jobs, to getting to school, to getting to doctor's appointments. It is something that we have to focus on like a laser. And what we as a community need to do is we need to realize where the real enemy is, and that's in Columbus. The state funding to RTA, to public transportation, is shameful. And we all need to use our collective political uh, lobbying ability to make sure that we get more funding for public transportation. And that's got to be the job of the next mayor to always be lobbying for that. But in addition to public transportation via the Greater Cleveland RTA, we need to make sure we're advocating for smart policies, transit-oriented development. We need to make sure that we realize that transportation is, is key. We need to, every time we do a road project, we need to make sure that we have complete and green streets. We need to make sure that with Vision Zero, we make sure our roadways are safe. We identify those intersections. But most of all, we need to realize that most people care most about the roads and that they drive on. The streets, their side streets, that's why I Thank tripled the much, budget for residential President. side streets and we're making great strides there. Thank All you. All right, I saw uh, Councilman Jones first. You've got 30 seconds. All right, real quick, and I know everybody's not a fan of this man, but we got to put some respect on his name, and that's Carl Stokes. Without Carl Stokes, there is no EPA, the Clean Water Act. Our lake has to be not only good for the ecosystem, but also the economy, really important. The second thing when it comes to transportation, I want to be clear, as mayor, it's all about being a champion. No institution will be in this city and not put residents first. The residents will be first. We want to hear their thoughts and their concerns. It doesn't make sense that Thank you have Councilman. an RTA that removed, removed some buses from different communities without allowing the community members to have any say so about it. Thank you very much, Councilman. Uh, uh, Councilman Reed, we'll go to you and then Senator Williams. Well, let's first of all put, uh, call it like it is. First of all, a mayor needs to put board members that understand the importance of transportation. And we talk about people walking the walk and talking the talk. When the mayor of the city of Cleveland shut down Public Square and didn't allow buses to go through, board members didn't say anything. Board members didn't step to the plate. It took citizens like myself to go out there and demand that we open this, this public square back up because people were being late to work, their doctor's appointments, and going where they needed to go because a mayor stepped up, closed down public square, and it took you, citizens Councilman. like me and others to get it open. 
So I do need to move on. Uh, Mr. Bibb, I'll give you a couple seconds to respond because the board was mentioned. Well, I, I wasn't on the board uh, during that time, uh, with all due respect, Councilman Reed. So um, and and I also want to say this, uh, as mayor, I'm going to do everything in my power to not only open up the buses back to Public Square, but we got to remove those Jersey barriers too because folks are sick and tired of that as well. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, Senator Williams, very briefly, then we got to go to the last question and closing statements. Very, uh, thank you very much. Listen, I just brought home $33 million for transportation funding. And for the first time in Ohio's history, I was able to get the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority um, on the track system. That's with the Ohio Department of Transportation so that they could replace the rail cars that we have. This has never happened in the history of the city of Cleveland. Secondly, because so many of our residents are traveling outside of Cleveland to go to work, we need to have direct transportation for those individuals not to have to catch two and three buses to get to work, but make sure that we are working with employers and working in the neighborhoods where those employees work to get Thank them directly much, to Senator. their location. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if I saw any other uh, rebuttals here. Uh, Congressman Kucinich, 30 seconds, and I believe uh, that'll be wrapping us very soon. Congressman. I helped form the Regional Transit Authority, and, and the basis for it was this, low fares, increasing the frequency and distribution of service. Our population is greatly different now. We need to make sure the services go to where people live. RTA's plant, new plant doesn't necessarily do that. So I'm going to see that plan reevaluated. You know, after the plan was put into effect, there were people on the east side who said they couldn't get to work because the bus, uh, they had to walk three blocks to get to catch a bus. We're going to change it and make sure that the transit dependent are able to get access to being able to a bus uh, nearby. Thank you very much, Congressman. It's time now, believe it or not, for closing remarks.